Hello, this is a tutorial for Monk UA for the Fisher of Woe Speed Clear. You're going to want any max armor, you're going to need any max armor with Radiant Insignias. You're going to want two runes of Vita, a minor healing, a minor divine, and a major superior figure. Your main weapon will be a staff with 2020 attributes, plus 5 energy, and 20% enchanting. Your bar is going to be Seed of Life. Vigorous Spirit, Patient Spirit, Duena's Kiss, Cure Hex, Glyph of Lesser Energy, Heal Party, and UA. And your attributes will be set up to where you have 14 Healing and 13 Divine. And also wanted to be noted that uh, it is preferable, it is advised that you take a second set, a 40-40 set, which I have in uh, my... F1 slot is my 40, my uh, 20, 20, 40, 40, whatever you want to call it, set for sticky areas, which you'll see in this video. So, whenever you zone in to Fisher of Woe, if you are, if you have the cons, if you're using the consumables, you collect money from everybody. If you don't have the consumables, then you drop your money, which would be 1k or 1,000 gold. And as I do here if you have them you use them after everybody's everybody's paid so what you want to do is you want to cast UA on yourself and what that does is it gives you a huge healing boost as well as reses any dead members within your little aggro bubble as you can see in my uh, my mini radar up there if anybody's in or on the edge of your aggro bubble you double click in your maintain bar you double click to dismiss and it will instantly teleport the dead ally to your location with full health and full energy. So it is very useful. So in this part you want to just, um, you want to keep the MT alive first of all. If you ever see your main tank going down, you can use indirect heals by using Glyph of Lesser Energy and Heal Party. And uh, it is an indirect heal which means it is not directed at him, but everybody gets it and he still takes it. So what you want to do is Vigorous Spirit is mostly for the Warriors. It is a great self-heal for them. You cast it on them before they go into a uh, a little scuffle like they do here. They have Vigorous on them. And with Vigorous, they're pretty much able to maintain themselves. So after that, you make your way up to this hill while Main Tank proceeds and uh, gathers up that group to the right as well as some others that are coming from the north around the arena <coughs> excuse me so uh, UA is a very easy job it's uh, in my opinion it's the easiest job and it gets pretty boring so right here you see the uh, main tanks taking damage if you ever see that you want to get within range of the main tank where his name is in grayed out in heal party and uh, as you may have seen when I first cast the heal party, the glyph of lesser energy then heal party. And what glyph does is it gives you two heal parties at a drastic, drastic energy reduction. And uh, heal party is a really big uh, energy consumer by itself. If you ever get low on energy, do what I just what I did in the video just now and dismiss UA. It is preferable that you maintain it for the huge healing boost. But um, if you're ever at one of these little safe spots, I like to call them like you're here now at the arena, where you don't need to maintain UA because there's a low probability of death, you um, you can double click to dismiss and get your energy topped off. But as far as uh, using heal party goes, you want a glyph of lesser energy before a heal party. And if you can't, it's alright. So at this point in the run, the main team splits. The UA, the Ritualist, and a Damage Dealer stay at the arena, while a, uh, uh, the MOP, uh, MT, and a Warrior split the other way. You see I'm going to put Vigorous Spirit on Oh, that's not my boy. My boy is uh, Brahmastra here. Let's stay with me. So you put Vigorous Spirit on the Warrior that's running away, help maintain. If Rossagon ever doesn't come, as he does in this video, you can just run within line of sight and he'll uh, 
start running over here to the arena. So what you can do or what you should do is get as far away as you can from the ritualist and uh, the uh, damage dealer. Take the quest so you can get your experience reward later. The hill is about as far as you can go. As you can see they're just barely within my aggro bubble which is as far as your hill range goes. You uh, throw Vigor Spirit on your damage dealer after he says that line. Shelter not the coward, whatever. That's the last line he says before he opens the gate. <coughs> as you saw here, the body block wasn't so good. So Here, normally you only have two people to, to worry about healing. But if Rastagon does take aggro, you can heal the NPCs. So Rastagon is your primary objective. If he goes down, the run fails. So you want to keep Rastagon alive. And the only person you should be removing hex from is your damage dealer. They can get Spiteful Spirit on them which is particularly nasty against warriors or any melee class. If Rastagon gets Spiteful Spirit, it does need to be removed. He uh, doesn't do any damage. Ritualist doesn't it doesn't matter. And the only other thing they can get is Mark of Pain, which isn't really that bad either. So after that's done, you take the quest or you receive your reward from the quest you previously taken. Here I dismiss UA to get my energy regen before the next battle in the uh, the battlefield over here. So you run down this same path that I'm taking right now to uh, to uh, I can't think of the the word to regroup for lack of a better word. Rendezvous is what I was thinking. <laughs> so here you just want to keep everybody alive. Standing monk stuff, nothing fancy. If you see a hex go off right here, you want to take it off. It's not spiteful spirit or anything that's, um, that's detrimental to the actual health of the, the warrior or the damage dealer. But you, it's blurred vision, which impairs their ability to hit. So you want to take that off. As you can see, our T2 dies right here, and I'll tell you now, it stays dead for the rest of the entire run. So, yeah. Our, uh, our MT is actually an extreme asshole, but uh, he takes the burden of T2 and uh, T1, if I'm not mistaken, later on also. And um, he does it all for us. It's because of him that we actually finished. It doesn't make him any less of an asshole, but... Uh, He's a good player, so you can't deny him that. So here we run to the Temple of War. And uh, our MT has actually already started 360. What they call the 360, where you run around the uh, Temple of War and pull all of the mobs that aren't anchored down. And he brings them to the top level. And then the main team kills all the mobs at uh, each 90 degree point around the arena or around the temple those mobs are anchored down they won't move well they will move slightly but they won't fall up to the top like the other mobs do so here if you see the main tank taking damage go ahead and heal party if you think he's gonna die he's taking too much damage for you to be comfortable with just go ahead and heal party and he'll be fine they're usually very good at maintaining their own life don't get scared if you see uh if you see them drop down really fast when they're above 50% because after 50% is when uh, Shroud of Distress kicks in and that's a, a really big region for them so they're, they're pretty good at maintaining themselves between Shroud and Death Charge so here if you see a hex on a warrior here you want to take it off as you see there these Mesmers cast Empathy and what that skill does is um, not only does it reduce the damage output, but it reflects the damage back onto the damage dealer. And it is heavy reflected damage, so you don't want that on the, on your warriors. So here you see the MT going down, so I throw a heal party. And that's what you want to do in the same situation. Not to say that it would go down, you just want to play it safe. And same thing, you just want to continue around the... Uh, 
the arena or the temple. I'm sorry, I keep calling it the arena. The temple. And standard monk stuff. We just want to keep everybody alive. Also, I want to make it noted that uh, Cure Hex has a 12 second recharge. 6 second if you get lucky with a half recharge. So if any warriors ever try to give you any bullshit about taking off hexes, blah blah, just <laughs> tell them to go fuck themselves because obviously they don't know what's going on. And it's only one person at a time. So they could live with it or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I let them die. And that's what you should do too. So here we reach. Uh, we go to the top level. As you see, I don't have UA because my energy is low. I want the regen. What the UA should do here is stand as far back as you possibly can. And... Uh, yeah, you can see I get two shards, so I run up to grab them real fast. Just in case we fail, you know you're going to be too careful. So, um, yeah, I start taking damage here. What the UA does, you only have two self-heals. You have a heal party, which takes too long to cast to heal yourself. And you have patient spirit, which is uh, really your main self-heal. So if you ever start to take any damage, you want to press F or whatever your self-selecting button is and cast patient spirit on yourself. <coughs> so here you just uh, you know stand among stuff we don't want to let anybody die I dismiss UA again this is uh, another one of those safe spots that I've spoken of earlier you could dismiss UA and it won't be uh, it won't be dangerous so to speak so here we just wait for the uh the ritualist to take the quest. And the main tank balls up all of the uh the mobs down below and you know go ahead and throw your vigorous spirits. <coughs> and uh do your monk thing. It's, fairly simple it's uh UA has to be the easiest job it's uh not to say that it doesn't get sticky in some parts as you'll see later on but um it's the most laid back you could you know tab out look at your web browser or whatever that's that's usually what I do so so after this is done you you do the other side very simple you uh, your only role is to keep people alive. You could want to if you feeling particularly froggy. So here you see there's a no splinter weapon. The warriors do a uh, really good job compensating for it for no splinter weapon. The rent should have maintained splinter weapon on them, but he hasn't. It's uh. I've come to the conclusion that it is most definitely his first time. I see you. I'm sure you will come to the conclusion as well after you see more of the video. So, uh, you could always tell when it's spiteful as opposed to mark of pain because you'll see their health steadily ticking down as they auto attack. And uh, that's how you know it's spiteful. Mark of pain is not so not so dangerous that you have to immediately take it off SS on the other hand is spiteful spirit so yeah here are uh, our rich list didn't take the damn wailing lord quest so uh, where we usually go is you can see the vista in the background that winding path through the mountains that's where you would go but uh, I took it upon myself to go back and get the quest that the, risk, the ritualist missed so um I cast Vigorous Spirit on the melees so they could run and take that Imperial Patrol out. I'm sorry, that Impaler Patrol out by themselves. And I go back and uh, I take the Ritualist Quest. Which, um, I mean, normally you don't have to do this. Like I said, it would be a straight shot to the Force of the Wailing Lord. 
Yeah, our rich list. Didn't watch any or not enough tutorial videos and, you know, didn't read any guides or anything like that. So this is the product of something like that. If you're going to do it for the first time, at least go prepared and have done your research. So here I just uh, just take the quest from Ostagon and make my way back. As you can see, I switched to my 4040 set for this part. It is a uh, I definitely find it better. One, you have a greater chance of spell recharge and casting, and two, you reduce the time of patient spirit with the 20% enchant mod. It'll actually add half a second to patient spirit. It'll add 6 seconds to Vigor Spirit for a total of 36, and it'll add half a second to Seed of Life as well, depending on uh, your rank. But uh, it, it's a good trade-off. With the Staff, you have longer Vigorous, longer Seed, but with the 4040, you have a greater chance of recharge and casting, plus a shorter Patient Spirit, which is integral to keep yourself alive. So I'd rather take the trade off and uh, use the 4040 set here, and it's it's never failed me. So here we um, yeah, standard monk stuff. If uh, you see anybody taking heavy consistent damage, you want a seed of life. Them seed of life is a uh, absolute lifesaver in these situations. It could take everybody from near death to topped off in a matter of a couple of seconds. It is uh, especially good if you have a main tank that is um, just on the edge of your map, somewhere just barely on the outside of your map, and you have somebody on the inside of your map who's taking heavy damage, your MT is about to die. Well, you throw Seed of Life on the person who's taking heavy damage, and the MT gets topped off as well. So it's a really good indirect heal. So here's standard monk stuff. You see I have UA dismissed for energy management. And uh, there's no splinter on the warriors. <laughs> the, uh, the ritualist actually just splintered himself. That uh, I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. So yeah, like as I said, first timer. You know, the ritualist is going to take out his club of a thousand bears and go go solo the wailing the wailing forest or whatever it's called and I'll be damned if he didn't cast it on himself again so anyway stand among stuff uh, keep everybody alive and um Here in this area, the warriors, they did a good job of taking it down, but there's also two other areas within the forest that you be you see it there, that you become, uh, you come under the effects of nature's renewal, which is particularly nice to UAs. With UA, you already have minus one energy regen. Well, nature's renewal gives another minus one energy regen for whoever's maintaining enchants. So you go from a total of four energy regen to two energy regen. And it's not what you want in, in heavy healing situations like these. So it's best to dismiss UA when under nature's renewal effects. Um, this guy gets spiked. As you see, I tried to catch it with seed, but uh, it doesn't work. I don't have UA like I would in Hall of Heroes, so I couldn't catch the spike. Which would, uh, That would have been a very easy spike to catch if it were Hall of Heroes. But here, like uh, like I said, standard monk stuff. Just heal and, uh, you know, whatever. It's not hard. So as you see, I'm still in the effects of nature renewal. The, uh, my boy and the other warrior there haven't had the chance to make their way towards nature renewal and kill it. So, as you see, there's no UA going on. These hexes that come from uh, these parts of the 
the woods from those spirit shepherds I think they're called it's um iron iron mist I think or ice prison or something like that it makes them move really really slow so you want to take that off of them I mean it brings them down to a crawl so uh, yeah keep that off of them it's not dangerous directly it's not detrimental to the health as it is say SS or empathy but it's still it's still bad So here we are waiting for MT. Oh, yeah, okay, our MT is gone, yeah, so uh, that's why these spikes are kind of messy. Wailing, the force of the Wailing Lord is taking kind of longer. Yeah, I forgot our um, asshole MT over there went to cover for T2. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I dog on the MT. I've ran with him before. I knew he was going to be an asshole. He's one of those uh, kind of condescending, holier than thou guys. But uh, like I said, he's good, so we have to give him that at least. So here it's more standard monk stuff. Just kind of stand on the outskirts. Um, make sure everybody's alive. I, I cast you away here and move out of the range of nature's renewal, as should you. If you uh, if you know nature's renewals around, because <coughs> it will be around, it's gonna be on that uh that back hill that you can see kind of toward the northeast right there. There's gonna be a nature renewal there. So keep everybody alive. If uh, this is hands down the hardest part for the uh, for UA. This is most definitely the hardest part. If you start to take heavy damage and you don't think you can survive, you turn around and get out. Don't try to, uh, you know, don't try to keep everybody alive. If you know the shit's going to hit the fan, you turn around and you get out. Because uh, the only other person who can, who can resurrect you is a ritualist. Because, uh... Unfortunately, not everybody carries resurrection scrolls, and that is the only means to res you by without uh, without taking the route of a resurrection scroll. And you definitely don't want to trust the fate of the run or the fate of your resurrection in the hands of a first-timer who seems as though he's done nothing to research the run. So here you see we're um, just taking our time, trying to get it done. We, uh, yeah, killing the little banshees, they're no threat. I don't know if that was loud. Excuse me if it was, that's a readjustment I'd say. Here you see an, ent an entire damn regiment of skeletal berserkers come out. And they uh, they don't play around. They hit pretty hard. You see, uh, homeboy over here died. Nah, yeah. It's just kind of kite. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. You see, that's where the heavy damage comes in. You know, there's no way you're gonna tank a berserker, so you get out. Run. This is, uh, yeah, he stays aggroed. These skeletal zircos stay aggroed for a good bit. And you see, I actually come quite close to dying, very close to health. So, um, that is about the adrenaline, all the adrenaline rush you'll get for UA, though. That is the height of excitement coming down the two health and almost dying. Other than that, the job is boring as hell. So here you just, uh, you do your UA thing after all the mobs stop pestering you, like this, uh, Berserker did. And you just, uh, you run up and you everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I scratched that arrow out. I, uh, I'm one of those people that I don't like being told what to do if I know what to do. 
and such as such is the rule with you a monk i know what to do and later on the uh, the mt actually <laughs> tells me how to ua him and uh boy talk about wanting to give somebody a mouthful of false teeth but unfortunately you can't do that over a video game so yeah that's that's unfortunate but anyway you just get everybody up you weigh everybody and uh give it a second go once everybody's region full you want to cast figure spirit on the uh the melees and the melees go about and do their thing you want to take those hexes off that was blurred vision that's, that's what the uh, skeletal eye sands give blurred vision, ice prison, things like that so you want to take those off So, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's, um, it's fairly boring. You just run around, heal, and if that's your thing, whatever, but it's boring. I mean, um, UA's my favorite role, and, and Fisher really is, but, uh, it's not very exciting. So here, this is a this is spiteful area across the bridge. So you want to take these hexes off. You see, they're hexes spiteful. So uh, you want to get those off. Yeah. Always show favoritism to my boy there. I'll take off two hexes in a row off my boy Brown before <laughs> I'll take him off on a warrior. I know that's wrong, but that's my buddy. So. Uh, yeah, he gets the better end. So here you just make your way back the way you came. And, uh, yeah, the ritualists didn't know what to do, so we spend a couple of seconds guiding him, showing him where to go. Hoping that he doesn't wipe us all. So the ritualist goes back and uh, we continue on with our Fisher of Woe speed clear. Now I want to add, as you can see the consumables are running out, Fisher of Woe never, should never take over 30 minutes. Um, as you, as, I mean, as you've seen, things have gone wrong, but uh, it should take 30 minutes at most, on average about 25. Good run is lower 20s and fantastic run is in the teens. So, yeah, this is a, this is actually where he tells me to UA him. Like, a, I don't know to UA, you know. The lazy MTs will do this because uh, it's too much inconvenience to run around and come out alive. So, yeah, that asshole can go fuck himself. But anyway, like I said, uh, like I was saying, if it ever comes to where you have to go over 30 minutes, which we do have to in this particular run, what you want to do is you just want to use an essence of celerity or a, a BU as they call them, such a dumb name. But you want to use an essence of celerity, that's all that's needed to finish the rest of the run. You don't need to use armor or grail, just the BU. I mean, what's, what's even up with that name? Who came up with the name BU? I mean, I, it stands for backup. And in the Fisher case, it would make sense because it's the backup essence of celerity. But in, in runs like Shards of War, Cathandrax, Frost Maws, things like that, it's not a backup. It's your primary and only essence. So it wouldn't make sense to call it a backup. I don't know. Whatever, I guess. Anyway, here, more standard monk stuff. The MT balls up, or tries to ball up these mobs. And, uh, you keep everybody alive. Kite, if you have aggro. And, um, yeah. 
you see UA is uh, fairly boring. You have time to go off on little, little rants about BUs and tab to look at the web browser because, I mean, yeah, UA isn't very difficult. So, uh, as you can see here, more indirect healing to keep the MT alive. You see he's going down, or he's uh, taking too much damage for your comfort level. Heal party, you can get him up some. So, uh, yeah. Let the warrior spike, or the uh, damage dealers. Then you go about your business. You uh, there are many mobs you can wedge your way past, such as this one. Many groups, I should say, not mobs. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, that was one of them. So even though we should be killing these these mobs, but the uh, since the ritualist is new and an inexperienced ritualist can easy easily wipe the entire group here. So, uh, you just make your way back to the arena, clearing the mobs along the path, or the directly visible obstructed mobs, mobs that will obstruct the uh, griffin carrier's path. You see here our consumables run out, so I use an extra BU, just the BU, and uh, here our MT is uh, going off in his little rage, because the warrior jumped in before he was ready. And... Uh, as you saw, actually direct heal to keep the tank alive, which in cases like this are good. You want to keep that tank alive, because if not, then uh, everybody's going to die. And that's the worst situation, then the chance of pulling aggro off. So in cases like that, the taboo where they say never direct heal the tank, it, uh, that can be thrown out the window like that in situations like this. So here, if, um, if damage is too heavy, like it is here, don't waste your energy, or if you're low on energy, on uh, energy, the best energy management would just to be let everybody die, and uh, you weigh them, because they come back with full health, full energy. They still retain their DP, but you know. So if you're floating constantly between like one and say ten energy, and the damage <coughs> is a constant, too much for you to keep up with. Just UA. Don't feel bad about letting them die in UA. In. So here, these are spifles. You want to get them off if you have a chance. So we continue along our path here. The uh, main tank does his job. You um, get some energy regen. You could actually dismiss UA here and let your energy regen, but uh, I chose not to, seeing as to how that last spike wasn't the best of spikes. So better safe than sorry. It's nice to keep UA up just in case, you know what I'm saying? So we continue along the path to the arena. This mob uh, is one of the ones that can sometimes be skipped. In this instance, it can't be skipped because it spawned too close to the uh, the little side path we take here. <coughs> so yeah, there's there's um. <coughs> Excuse me. There's not much that can be said about UA. It's a, uh, it's a good healing bar. It's a good general heal bar. I use it for PVE to do uh, titles and and uh, things like that. You know, the Wayne's Kiss, Patient Spirit, all real good general heals. And uh, yeah, there goes our T1. MT actually 
actually did his part too. He had a a buku load to do this run, but he didn't mind shouldering the burden. He's actually a pretty good player, as I said before. Still an asshole, but good nonetheless. So same deal. Come to the arena and um, and uh, yeah, make sure MT doesn't die. That's one of the situations where you heal party indirect heal. I'm not sure if I said this before, but uh, if you ever need to use heal party without glyph, if glyph is on recharge, you can go ahead and do that. It's better to sacrifice the energy than to sacrifice the life. Here you uh, you will come down. You don't have to, but it's better to come down if the warriors can't handle the load to kill the shard wolf. As you may have noticed when we first passed through here, the shard wolf wasn't there. The shard wolf only spawns when the quest the hunt is taken by the second Terra, the T2. And uh, the spawn, the shard wolf spawns in this area that we've previously passed and was known to be clear. So you have to come back and kill it whenever you go to the arena to clear the path for the uh, the griffins. <coughs> and after that, main tink, main team. I'm sorry, is done. You just run back to uh, the temple and you wait for a quest to be 10 of 11. <laughs> or, or main take actually went to take the uh, the griffins from the ritualist. Which uh, in most cases would be an asshole thing to do, but in this case it's actually justified seeing as how the ritualist is more likely than not a first timer and we are very close to finishing and. It gets very aggravating when uh when you're so close to finishing and you fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that way wasn't gonna work. Too tight of a passage. So go around, just lose your way around all these mobs back to the temple. <coughs> Where the forge master was at. And uh you don't really have to worry about going and res those other guys, the terrors, because uh, they will res once 11 of 11 quests have been completed. And once you get to the temple, if you'd like, you can uh, turn in your quest to get rewards towards your survivor title or just to accumulate experience. You turn in one quest at Eternal Lord Terrors, or Terries, or whatever, on the bottom level. You could turn in three to the forge master you could turn in two to rastagon which i got one earlier from the arena you can also turn in a gift of griffins to him and there's one in uh, the camp of menzies that you could turn in which is uh, it may be more trouble than it's worth there's sometimes mobs still padding around there and you could die trying to get it to turn in so as you see here i'm just turning in quests and, uh, yeah. So our part is done. And you just wait for, there it goes. And T2 died again. Uh, actually, by unanimous vote, the, uh, <laughs> the T2 wasn't going to get rezzed. Everybody voted for me not to go res him because, uh, you know... It makes no sense for him to get some lanyap after he did nothing. He's been dead since the beginning of the run, so... Yeah. He actually basically told everybody to fuck themselves and left, so... But that is the UA tutorial video, and thank you very much for watching. Look out for more tutorial videos.